will surely have to surrender the championship to one side of the Pennines after this. I don't recall them giving away any soft goals last season, but defensively they're just not the same. As for City, well, they're still in touch thanks to David White, scoring for the sixth successive game. He's just about the hottest thing in the first division right now. Wednesday were going for their fifth straight win and their fourth clean sheet in a row, but it took Queen's Park Rangers only seven minutes to end the second part of that sequence. Ray Wilkins doesn't score too many, but it's a portfolio of very high quality. Goal of the day, contender A. A minute to go, and Wednesday preserved third spot in the first division when David Hurst wriggled around to tee himself up for a left foot special. Hurst fourth in as many games. The Hurst for England campaign gathering even more momentum. The quality of the goals not reflecting the quality of this Merseyside derby. Liverpool, who'd won the previous five league meetings between the two, going in front through Nick Tanner. Tanner's first for the club by an inch and a bit. But the second half belonged to Everton, they were terrific. Their flyweight attack moving with pace and purpose. Beardsley's header to Jackson was wonderfully deliberate. Jackson's pass to Johnston wasn't, but the Blue Hordes didn't give a hoot. Everton deserved it and would have won it, but for Liverpool's player of the season in my book, Ray Houghton, with a magnificent goal line clearance from Martin Keown. Cyril Regis appears to be born again in every respect. He's not just scoring regularly, he's scoring brilliantly. Goal of the day contender B. Villa's second was all about two passes, one that happened and one that didn't. Cyril freeing Dwight York, who would have been pilloried for not squaring it to Tony Daly, but for one thing, his eighth goal in his last nine games. Southampton, having drawn the previous three, staged another late bid for a point, but could only manage a consolation header by Alan Shearer. Some consolation, their bottom of the first division. Spurs have lost more home games than any other side in the first division, but give them the room to play and they're capable of outsmarting anyone. Goal of the day contender Paul Allen finishing off an incisive move. Norwich are in one of their unproductive spells at present, one point from five games. Into the second half, and goal number 21 of the season for the First Division's top scorer, Gary Lineker. No one does that sort of thing better than Gary. Naeem from Paul Gascoigne range. Spurs winning it 3-0. Here's something worked out on the training ground that really worked a treat. Richard Harvey putting Luton in front in their fourth successive home game. And that's contender D. Their third successive win, lifting them off the bottom. Mark Pembridge bearing down on Dave Besant, who told the referee, he's conning us both, I made a perfectly legitimate attempt for the ball. Well, that could explain why Besant stayed on the pitch. Now, here's an event in itself. John Dreyer's penalty technique. Here's another cute free kick. Oldham caught napping by Clough and Keane and possibly by Stuart Pearce turning up like an uninvited guest. The man's full of surprises. Now that gave Oldham the worst defensive record in the first division. But no one scored more goals at home. Milligan to Sharp and the first of two delightful headers to set up victory. The second from one of their scorers in the 6-3 Boxing Day spectacular against Manchester United. Paul Bernard. A second half blitz by Notts County leaving West Ham with only one point from six outings. Splendidly struck opener by Phil Turner. There's a bit of a gap opening up between the bottom four and those immediately above them. This was a very important win for Neil Warnock's side. Paul Harding's header for 2-0. West Ham, well, they look to be in a lot of trouble. Next to bottom and leaving Tony Agana in oceans of space to get his first goal for County since joining them from Sheffield United for three quarters of a million pounds. As for last season's great escapologists, it's only one win in six, but a peach of a goal set up by Agana's old sidekick Brian Dean and headed home by Jamie Hoyland. Palace have been finding points hard to come by of late, but they'll take heart from Marco Gabbiadini's sixth goal for them. Ian Wright's a tough act to follow, but this was a confident bit of business by Gabbiadini. That's what Steve Koppel paid £1.8 million for. 
Coventry's fourth successive away game in front of a crowd of just over 3,000 at Southhurst Park and a goal worthy of a greater audience. A wonderful piece of improvisation by Stuart Robson. Peter B. Greek cross for the second goal. Beardsley controlled it with his right and scored with his left. Mickey Adams hadn't scored in 92 games in a Southampton shirt. He curled in a free kick to break his duck. It was too late and Southampton were booed off the field. And the fastest goal of 1992 is coming up. Just 33 seconds gone at the city ground when Mark Pembridge let fly from 25 yards, 1-0 Luton. Luton were looking good for yet another revival win until Des Walker burst through. This is first senior goal in 313 attempts. Happy New Year goal, Des. Webb. It's in there. Neil Webb. 14 minutes. Well, he's known as a free kick specialist, Clayton Backmore. Similar free kick to before. Neil. 